As far as it goes, here's uh, <clears throat> my three brothers. Gordy, of course, got killed. Mm -hmm. My brother Walter, he was the meanest one of the whole lot. Of the whole, <laughs> well, 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 it was really. He 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 had a disposition like my grandfather. Mm -hmm. My mother's father had a, a nasty disposition. Uh huh. And insofar as uh, uh, Walter was concerned, he had the same sort of a disposition as my grandfather had. And he was, uh, he was really, he was nasty. Mm -hmm. Of course, he kicked the bucket. Right. Tom, who wasn't really a nasty guy, only Tom had well, just the same as I got. Uh, knew it all. <laughs> when it comes right down to it, though, for the lack of education that we had, we came a long ways, all yeah, of us. Yeah, I would say. We all. Now, Walter was boss down at the printing firm with Lyons, J.B. Lyons Brick Company. Mm -hmm. Tom out in Colorado, they're out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or out in Oklahoma, in mm -hmm. Tulsa, Oklahoma. He had a big shopping complex that he was a superintendent of the whole damn yeah. maintenance of that whole business, and that was a big one. Yeah. And, and uh, I have always, I have never gone on a job in, in my whole life. And, and for no particular reason, not doing it consciously, uh, I've always climbed that ladder. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, it got towards the end of my career that I looked to see what it took for me to climb that ladder. Mm -hmm. And I've always got up that ladder, and I've gone as high as my ability and my education would take me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even with the state there, look, I was superintendent, superintendent of office construction. I was the highest paid uh, construction boss. There you go. There. And uh, I was getting, at that time, why, that was tremendous money, 14500 That was big money. <laughs> Today, that same job. Would pay thirty-five thousand, or, go. or, or yeah. you, you know, yeah. And uh, as far as as far as I'm concerned, we lived just as well then as we could live now. Yeah, you know, yeah. good. And that's why I say that uh, the depression, the depression, uh, <clears throat> didn't hurt us as much as as uh, it would today. Yes, because. Yeah. The kids have got used to spending more money exactly. and having more money and everything like that, and they would really, yep, you know, there'd be a new problem. They'd be, uh, well, they, they'd have a problem. Yeah. Well, let's. I I know so little about your side of the family, and you kid all the time about you know do do I really want to know about uh, you know about some of our ancestors? But I really would like to hear a little bit about. Um, uh, you know the, the, the people you remember as a child, your your father, your grandfather, and and, and you know, grandparents and such. The, that's, that picture, that one on the end. There, this one right here. That that yeah. Yeah. That's a picture of your great grandfather. Which one is he? That is my grandmother. Okay. That was your great grandfather there. Okay. All See? right. Okay. <clears throat> now. Where where was where were they born? Well, <clears throat> is it, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> it, it, it has to, it, 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 everything is so crowded. I, <laughs> that's okay. I, my rose gallery. Uh, where, where my father born? was born in Aberdeen, Scotland, where I was born. Okay. I was born in Aberdeen, Scotland, in 1905. Okay. About how old was your dad at the time? 
Uh, do you remember? Uh, I I think he had just uh, oh, 21. Yeah. Or 21, 22. Okay. I mean, it was one of those, you know. Mm -hmm. My father, people were uh, common people. Mm -hmm. uh, they did common work. My father learned the granite business. Mm. He learned to cut stone and things like that. And, and in fact, he was a pretty fair mm -hmm. stone cutter. Mm -hmm. Where my mother's people were in the trade, in the business. They, uh, my grandfather was a superintendent of uh, a mill that Singer Sewing Machine Company in Aberdeen, Scotland. Wow. What was his name? Uh, Scott. William Scott. Okay. And uh, moved his whole family to London, England, for a matter of several years, mm -hmm. where he was a superintendent of one of their factories down there, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then went back to Aberdeen and was superintendent of the factory there. My grandfather was a smart man, a man with a, a mediocre, you might say at that time was, today you might say it would be a mediocre education, mm -hmm. but at that time was a good education. My grandmother, my mother's mother, mm -hmm. didn't know how to read or write. But she was the smartest person in the world yeah, yeah. because of the fact that when my grandfather came home in the evening, she had a fanatic uh, mind. She had a fantastic mind. Okay. He would read the whole newspaper to her. Wow. And she would absorb all that. Oh, she would absorb it. So yeah. she knew more than most people did. Right. Even without being able to read or write. Oh, yeah. Now, what would, do you remember what her uh, her maiden name was? No. No. Okay. What was her first name? Margaret. Margaret. Okay. So I uh, I can remember now. I went to school in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, must have been four and a half, five. Okay. Because we came to this country, I was only five and a half or thereabouts when we came over to this country. Okay. And uh, I can remember going to school. I can remember in my mind, I can remember just where the school was. Wow. Uh, off of George Street, opposite where my grandmother, Riddle, lived, mm -hmm. was Spring Garden. And on the way home from school in the afternoon, I would stop into my grandmother Scott's house. And I would go and get her messages. Okay. And the messages meant go to the grocery store and get her groceries oh, and okay. things like that. I see. Because of the fact that there was no refrigeration in them days, right. and there was no ice, uh, I mean, like we knew it, mm -hmm. in the ice boxes. Mm -hmm. And so meats and things like that, she'd buy it daily because the stores had the refrigeration for it, and she'd buy it daily. Right. So I would stop at my grandmother's house at the age of five, say, mm -hmm. and I would go and get her groceries, mm -hmm. and then I would come back and she would give me a farthing. And I would sit in a corner by the fireplace, and she would tell me stories. But that she would make up as make she up went there. along. As she there. went along, yeah. and they were fantastic. I can't remember them now, yeah, but yeah. but they were fantastic because I used to sit there. Isn't that I I can I I can picture the house. In my mind. What? So she must have had quite a mind, even even though, never schooled, she had the imagination and the and and you know was able to absorb a lot around her and then you know in turn share that with you. She had to have, she had to have <clears throat> a wonderful memory yeah. and a wonderful mind yeah. to put up with my grandfather. <laughs> because my grandfather was, uh, he was a uh, son of a gun. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, 
never abused me. Yeah. Uh, walked hell out of Walt. <laughs> because before we came to this country, why we stayed with them for I don't know how long, week mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. And he had told Walter not to go to the old neighborhood anymore. And, and Walt, my brother Walt, he did as he damn well pleased. Yeah, yeah. How, how so, much older than you was uh, was Walt? I was a year and five months older than Walt. Oh, you were older than Walt was. Okay. Well, I was the oldest one. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. And and uh, and Walt was a year and five months older than Tom. Okay. There were the three of us came over, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time with my mother. Right. And. Uh, that was quite a trip. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Now, let me, let me back up a little bit. Uh, where, where does your father play a part in, uh, in, in, in all this? You say you came across just with your mother? Yeah. Okay. Because my father had come over. Now, and there was something too about my uh, father. I understand. Mm -hmm. He was a, an honorable man in a dishonorable way. <laughs> okay. How, how do you mean? He did a lot of drinking. Okay. He spent a lot of money, like myself. Money that could have done more good in the family, but he blow it. Mm -hmm. But he was. Well, I have known. I have known a lot of men that came from Scotland and had been years before they sent back to Scotland for their family to wow. bring them over here. I mean years. Wow. Where with my father, we were here six months after he came over. Mm -hmm. My father went to Canada to begin with. Okay. He sailed to Canada. And uh, <clears throat> from Canada he came down to Barry, Vermont, where the granite business Sure. And uh, we came down by train too. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of trouble on account of that. Because for some reason, some way along the line, uh, it caused me a lot of trouble. It caused me a lot of trouble and, and, and confugality mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the United States. State's right, immigration right. department. Right, something to do with your birth certificate and, and oh, all yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, because uh, there was some reason we didn't register coming into the United States. Yeah, now from Canada. Is, okay, now getting to Canada originally, did he, he you know, come into the United States and then travel by land to, to Canada? Is that how he did it? Or oh no, he, well, he went right into. He, he went to Canada. Right straight to Canada from Scotland. Okay. Now, to show you how my father felt about. My father was only in this country five years before he became an American citizen. Mm -hmm. And that was as soon as he could become an American citizen. Wow. He had to be at least five years in the country. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what he wanted to be, a, a that's citizen great. of this country. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've always, you know, hey. <laughs> so uh, he had got us out. Uh, out of Scotland in a hurry, but okay. we got on the boat, and my mother and I were both taken seasick oh. the first day out, and we were that way until the last day we came in oh. and got into the Canada. Yeah, obviously, and you remember uh, that very well. Oh you? yes, <laughs> yeah, we were in our cabin, we couldn't uh -huh. uh, leave, you know, mm. and uh, uh, Walt. And Tom running the decks and, mm -hmm. and this and that and having a hell of a time, you know, and just Tom, a couple of kids. Tom couldn't have been more than what, a couple uh, and a half years yet, old? Yeah, a couple and a half, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. <laughs> See, he was two years and ten months younger than I. Right, right. So, uh, See, so. A couple of years old, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And, uh, no, it was, it was quite an experience. I imagine. At the time, we didn't think of it that mm -hmm. way, you understand, but now sure. in, in uh, recollection, why, it was an adventure. It was a really uh, uh, an adventure, sure. you know, sure. uh, us coming into this country. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and as I said, I had uh, a lot of uh, confugality with the uh, immigration department. And 
I'll never forget to I went down to the immigration office in Albany. I had a pistol permit that I had no business having because I didn't know at the time that I was given the pistol permit that you had to be a citizen. I thought, I've always thought that I was a citizen, a citizen of the United States. I've always claimed. Mm -hmm. There was trouble with that too, you know, because uh, I've always claimed uh, what country you're a citizen of, the United States of America. Sure. Yeah. And if it hadn't been for a man by the name of Schultz, who was a, 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 an officer of the immigration department, it could have been a hell of a lot worse for me. Mm -hmm. Because he, uh, he uh, set up my, well he, I, Carol and I went to go to Canada one right. time. Right, I remember this. Yeah. And they wouldn't let us in. Mm -hmm. They would let us in if they we weren't. wanted to, but they wouldn't let us they out. Let you back out yeah. Wouldn't let me back out, you know. So we didn't go in. And then when uh, then when I was down there at the uh, immigration department, they brought up this. What do you got a pistol permit for? <clears throat> Well, I didn't know. Well, how did you get it? You signed for it. Yeah. I said, I didn't pay any attention to what I was signing for. Yeah, you always assume. I said, the, the party that handed me and said, sign this, sir, I said, I trusted him and everything like that. Mm -hmm. He didn't know the circumstances, and I wasn't aware of the circumstances. Sure. So I signed it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in return, I got a pistol permit, which I still have. Yeah. Well, he, this immigration officer was, uh, he, uh, he rubbed me the wrong way, <laughs> and then I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take it, that's all. Yeah. See? So, we had to go around and, and uh, to the point where Carol was sitting there in the office and she was crying. Mm -hmm. And the immigration officer finally said to me, he said, he says, I'll put you in jail and forget you were there. And I said, have you got a warrant for me? He says, no, but I can get one. Well, I says, when you get one, you come look for me. I said, because <laughs> I'm leaving here right now. Mm -hmm. And that was when Mr. Schultz said, he said to the immigration officer, called him by name and said, uh, can I take Mr. Riddell into a side room and talk to him? He said uh, to me, he said, would it be all right with you? I said, you, I said you're the only gentleman I've met here, I says, <laughs> in this party yet, so far. <laughs> I said, yes. So in the course of questions, they will come to one, and it says, what country do you claim allegiance to? Mm -hmm. I said, the United States of America. He said, you can't. I said, you asked me, didn't you? I <laughs> says, and I told you that's, and I said, I still say, United States of America. Mm -hmm. So he tried to change my mind, and then, and, and, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, you see, once upon a time the law said I was, mm -hmm. and then some reason they changed the law and, and said I wasn't. Sure. And, and, and uh, it was quite a, it was quite a, so he said, well, he said, they're not going to know. He said, they're going to know that I wrote this in. But he said, I don't, uh, I, I'm going to, so he wrote something in. Hmm. And uh, it was okay by me. Yeah. I read it and then I said, okay. Hmm. So, well, to make a long story longer, <laughs> it, Finally, my papers come after I spent twenty-five dollars for entrance fee and, and all that stuff that they go through. Boy, yeah. boy, there's some great rackets in this oh, sure, uh, politics, sure. you know, great rackets. 
And then I went down to the immigration office to take and Carol went with me because she was afraid I was going to be put in jail. Mm -hmm. And we got down there and he said, this uh, immigration officer, he was in charge of the office. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one, there was one reason. Uh, one of the uh, officers that was there started questioning me. And I said to him, what the hell did you just get off the last boat? I mean, I wasn't being nice, you know, about this at all, because they were pitying me. Mm -hmm. You just get off the last boat? He had to, you know, what I, why should I, you know, this and that. I asked him if he just got off the last boat. Right? He was no more of a citizen than I was more of a citizen than he was, you sure, know. Sure, sure. But. Uh, this was taking place how many years after you'd been in this country? You'd already been here. Didn't have been a service and everything else. Yeah, you'd already served our country. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, and I could, I could have, I could have got a, a, a certificate of uh, citizenship because of my service, and I wouldn't accept that. No. No, they were going to take me my way, or not going to take me at all, <laughs> because no, because I did, absolutely. Yeah. The General Electric Company hired me with a job thinking that I was a citizen. I sure. mean, they saw my papers, they saw my father's papers, and mm -hmm. which I was a part of. Yeah, right, right, that's what I figured. Once your father became a citizen, the, the offspring are citizens, right? No, but uh, here was a peculiar thing. During the investigation and during the litigation, they, uh, my mother was a citizen. And my mother never took any papers, never took any examination, never took anything. And I said, how can you consider my mother a, 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 a citizen, a citizen yeah. when she's never gone through anything? Well, because she was married to your father. <laughs> that makes less sense than you being and, a son. And, and, and I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, more so because yeah. I had she had she could have turned him down, but he couldn't turn me right, down. Right, exactly. Kind of, him, kind of absolutely, tough, yeah. you know. Isn't that crazy? And uh, it, it, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. So it you was, this this was happening to you back in the sixties? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that so, was. It, you know. Back when you came here, which would have been about nineteen ten or so. Nineteen eleven. Nineteen eleven. Um, you left behind, uh, uh, were both uh, sets of grandparents living? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, well my grandfather wasn't. My oh, okay. Father, my father's, father's father. father wasn't. Okay. What was his name? Uh, his name was uh, Riddle. Well, yeah. His, his first name was? Uh, William. William, okay. You see, now there's, there's the part that comes in. A lot of people will say to me, uh, what is your middle name? And I'd say, my middle name is Non. None. Yeah. As I said uh, in the military, I said when I had to sign it, I says, uh, first name William, middle name Non, last name Riddell. <laughs> now you know why we call ourselves Riddell. No. The name in Scotland is pronounced Riddle. That's what you've been saying. Yes, I was wondering right. about that. Yeah. When we moved to South Barry, Vermont, and registered in school. It was one of those one-room schools, you know, mm -hmm. that every grade was in the school. Right. There was a family in that school, a Scottish family, whose name was Riddle, R-I-D-D-L-E. Ah. And it was Riddle. Mm -hmm. So the teacher is the one that put the pronunciation on the last syllable of our name and called us Riddell. I'll be darned. Now she didn't change the spelling. No, the she spelling is the same. R I D E L L. Yeah, just changed the pronunciation. That's just uh, just put the pronunciation on the last syllable I'll and, be darned. and made it Riddell instead of Riddle. So as far as you and your brothers were concerned, that was your you know, you, you started uh, Pronouncing it that way? Well, that's right, yeah. Riddell. We yeah. started pronouncing it Riddell. Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. But if uh, someone calls me Riddle, I don't argue with them about yeah, it because right. that was, that's, that's what I'll, I started out with. I'll be darned. You know. Isn't that crazy? Uh, so your dad worked uh, for the uh, for the state. How, how long did you stay in Barrie? Oh, we were, we were in Barrie about 
six years. Yeah, worked for the same uh, granite company that all that time? Oh yeah, well he worked for different granite outfits out okay. there, you know. All right. But then, <clears throat> he belonged to the Order of Scottish Clans, mm -hmm. Clan Gordon, number 12 up in Barrie. And there's a magazine that they edit called The Fiery Cross. It's a Scottish magazine, a, a clan magazine. Mm -hmm. And in that magazine, he found a nad that wanted someone to teach bagpipes and uh, be a pipe major a band or the, whatever the, the writing was. Mm -hmm. uh, a job guaranteed by the General Electric Company and Clan McRae. Hmm. My father answered the ad. How many others answered it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my father got called. I'll be there. And asked if he would come down here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was about 1917? Yeah, 1917. Okay. So my father came down here. And he went to work for the General Electric Company for a couple of years. He wanted to get out of the granite business. You see, the average age of a stone cutter at that time, they were only uh, 38 years of age. Okay. That was the uh, on account of silicosis, you know, the their lungs fill up with the stone dust. Sure. And uh, <clears throat> it was, uh, I think it was 38 years of age was uh, proclaimed the average age of a stone cutter. Mm -hmm. Now my father lived 10 years longer. Mm or had 10 years added to his life mm -hmm. than the average age on account of his playing bagpipes. I'll be darned, yeah. Because the blowing of it had expanded his lungs yeah. bigger and it took more dust to cover them. <laughs> well, you, you know, it well, it's probably it, true, yeah. See, it, it makes sense to yeah. me. Well, the doctor, yeah. the, the doctor told him at the time. I'll be darned. Uh, yeah. Isn't that something? Uh, yeah. his, he had been taught by his father? What? Bagpipes? Oh, no. My no. father was taught by, uh, well, according to uh, legend or history, I think one of the finest pipers in Aberdeen, Scotland. Oh. Remember his name? No. No? Okay. I didn't know, but I forgot. Okay. Of course, Aberdeen, you know, you maybe have heard, you've heard about it, though, how tight a Scotchman is. <laughs> How tight is a Scotchman? Well, Aberdeen had was the tightest bunch of Scotchmen that ever was born, mm -hmm. because they tell about there was only there was one Jew in town, and he couldn't make enough money to get out of town. <laughs> so the, uh, that's how tight the Scots were up there in Aberdeen. <laughs> frugal, uh, frugal is right. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, Oh wow! So he, you guys moved down uh, down here to uh, Schenectady. Yep. Okay. Yep. Where about Scotia. Scotia? Scotia. Where about in Scotia? Glen Avenue. Okay. Uh, three oh three Glen Avenue. All right. You're about twelve years old or so. Uh, uh, twelve, thirteen. Uh, Eleven, twelve, twelve. Yeah, and there's some twelve. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and you left the one room schoolhouse behind. What did you find when you got here? Were you also in a similar? Oh no! Oh, oh no! We come down here. We we attended the Mohawk School in, in Scotia. There, and that was a big school. Yeah. My good heavens! Two yeah. floors. What was what was it like? What was the transition like coming from such a small community into a city like that? To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, I don't have much uh, recollection of it. Uh, I mean, I don't have much comparison. Mm -hmm. I can't think of. Uh, too much comparison. That, yeah, it didn't seem to bother you no, at the time, or no, it no. hasn't stayed with you. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, being as smart as I was, why I didn't make the <laughs> school I went to, I was going, wasn't going to learn anyway. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, the way uh, it went. Now, your, your mother all this time, as obviously at that time the average housewife, homemaker, she, did she do any work on the outside at all? <clears throat> or do any... Uh, she was a she was a matron in a school in Scotia. Okay. Yeah, yeah and uh, she had a good reputation in Scotia. For the mm -hmm. kids in Scotia, thought a lot of her in Great. school. Great. What was her name? 
Margaret. Margaret, okay. And uh, she had a good reputation because uh, she took no guff from them, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of them didn't like to take baths, and, and she'd say, in you go, <laughs> in you go, and go. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, they had to take a bath in school. Wow. Uh, you know, showers in school. Sure. Because, well, most of them, well, that's all they had. A lot of them had outside toilets yeah, and things right. like that, you know, in Scotia, when back in them days, sure. hey, hey, that's that's a long time ago. Yeah. And, uh, and your dad uh, would uh, cross the, the river to go over to GE? Was it where it is now? Yeah. Okay. My father wasn't too fond of the Jet Electric Company. Yeah, what did he, what did not he, too fond of working inside. What did he do for them? He was a coil winder. Mm hmm. He worked in the coil winding department. He spent uh, two or three years, and then went back to his trade. Okay. Because uh, it was too confining being yeah. indoors like yeah. that. He worked father. outside all his life. Yeah, he'd worked outside all his life, you know. Sure. These stone sheds, uh, they don't have, they have roofs over their heads, some ply in some places. All right. My father worked the big machines, you know, the big cutters. Okay. And I can remember we used to take his lunch down, carry lunch down to him, you know, and he worked. And my God, it would go in the yard, and where the dust would be the thickest, you know, he was in the middle of it. Mm. And it was uh, peculiar when you think about it, it was peculiar. Uh, he would stuff damp sponges up his nostrils huh. to filter the stone dust out and then stand there with his mouth wide open <laughs> sucking it all in, you know. So what the hell good it was doing, you know. And, 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 but he had the cleanest nose in town. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, that's what he used to do. Oh, you're darn. Yeah. Isn't that something? He was a good stone cutter. Yeah. He was a good stone cutter. There is a now was it? Uh, he he didn't do the the detail work. It was the cutting of the stone out of. The, oh, he did everything. He, he did, did the yeah. detail work to all. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, all right. yes. He and these would be used in, in buildings and. and you know, he worked for the Gardner Monument oh, place okay. in Schenectady. There, all that right. was when Gardner was the monument yeah. works around here. And for headstones and, and oh, stuff. there's a couple of there's a couple of uh, big monuments in the Vale Cemetery in Schenectady that was cut by my father. Oh, be darned! Oh yeah, there's one that just as you go in the front entrance there, on the right hand side, there's a big stone. Yeah, and he did that. Uh, yeah. Oh, he you know he was a he could finish and things yeah, too. That's great. But I guess maybe because there was more money in the big machine, you know. Yeah. The big hammers and. Mm -hmm. So did you stay in uh, in school till the uh, to graduate high school? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scotia. Yeah. Okay. And that would have been um, what 1920. About 1920. About 1920 or so. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little later. Maybe did a little you, sooner. A little sooner. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I was a pretty smart kid. Uh huh. You know. I haven't got over it yet either. <laughs> still the same. Still the same. Just as smart. As you're going to school, what were your what were your thoughts as to what you wanted to do? Do you have any idea what you wanted to do with your life? Well, there was some girls in school that I kind of <laughs> went for, you know, and things like that. Uh, no, it's uh, no. I I had no idea. Now, now uh, let me back up just a little bit. The uh, we we started talking about the pipes and how your father came down here to start the pipe band. You were involved from almost from the beginning as well, right? When did you start learning how to play the, the back? When I was two. Really? Two you years old. The, the, the chanter at, at two? Yeah. You see, uh, ordinarily we don't teach pupils until they're, oh, eight uh -huh. or nine or ten, you know, because sure. the, the veins in their neck, you know, blowing all like that, mm -hmm. uh, expands them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but when I when I was in uh, was in Scotland, mm -hmm. he would have his practicing chanter be on a dining room table like, mm -hmm. and he'd leave it there, and then he'd go to work. So I would take a hold of it and I'd blow through it. So I was blowing in that there, not fingering, you yeah, know. Yeah, right, right. But, you were but right. I was blowing in that thing there, yeah. 
So when I was six is when he started teaching me. And now when I started reading the music. Wow. Because there is a conception, you know, with a lot of people that uh, we don't learn by music <laughs> because they don't see any music in front of us. You know, yeah, right. But we, we right. learn by music. Well, you're playing notes. So the word notes is right. right. you got to know that. Uh, of course, there are some uh, that play by ear. Sure. But I learned uh, from music. So <clears throat> when I was eight years old, I was playing in a band. I'll be done. I had a half size set of pipes, huh. and I was playing in the band up in Barry, Vermont. See? When I was eight. And then, of course, when I came down here, I played. Uh, I was one of the first. Well, I was the first member of the band. There you go. You'd have to be if your dad put it together. Yeah, I <laughs> was the first member of the band. I'll be darned. And you know. When you stop to think, when I stop to think that I celebrated the 75th birthday yeah, of the band, yeah. I said to myself, where the hell did all the years go? Where did all the years go? Yeah, just amazing. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's surprising. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, educational. Oh sure. To sit and reminisce. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's why we're here. I, you know, I, you know, that, uh, sit and reminisce about sure. uh, what has occurred. Yeah. Oh, you told some great stories at the uh, at the party at the seventy fifth uh, anniversary party. You yeah. know, when you, when you got up there and, and talked, and I've got that on videotape too. Well, what did you did. Uh, some, I don't know. Some fun stories. Well, oh, you said some. You just told a couple quick short stories about the competition that you used to you know get into and and. Uh, uh, the the A yeah, and the, yeah. the B competition it was it was great stuff. Yeah, well, it was great yeah, stuff. Yeah, sounds like you had a lot of fun. Did now, I don't want to get too detailed on this, but uh, you know, how big was the band when you started? Did you find uh, enough people locally to, to, oh, to get yeah, a good band we, started? Oh, the the war the war mm -hmm. uh, broke up the band the first time. Oh yeah, it would have been around nineteen seventeen. Nineteen seventeen, you know, 19, around there, yeah. you know, and uh, they were called up to, into the service. Yeah, so there were too many young, able-bodied men left here, right? That's right. Yeah, and uh, how did the war affect your your family in particular? Any in any way, shape, or form? You were still a little too young. Well, I did a lot of traveling. Did you? We 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 used to go every weekend, and and them days, you know, you traveled by train. Right. There were no buses, mm -hmm. and there were no airplanes. Right. And we went by train, and we went all the whole eastern coast, all the way down into Georgia. Yeah. yeah. And every weekend we'd have a parade somewhere uh, for Liberty Loan Drives. Ah. For the bond selling. Sure. So I would start out of here, and every station we'd come to, we'd have to change train, you know. I sure. mean, you'd change. I'd start out with a bag, pipe, my bagpipes in a box, and when I'd come home, I, my bagpipes would be on my arm, and my box would be full of Hershey bars and, <laughs> and things like that, because every station you stopped at, there was a Red Cross, and they were handing out ice, you know, uh, Hershey bars yeah, right. and uh, cigarettes to the troops, because yeah. there were a lot of troop trains traveling through at the time. Sure. Yeah. And we, oh no, we, it was a that was an education by itself. Sure. When you're young, you don't think of these things. You don't. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's uh, it's life, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, or a job or a job. Sure, you know. Sure, you're not it, thinking it, about what you're know, learning it, along but, the way. Uh, you don't think uh, that it's going to affect your future or mm -hmm. anything like that. You figure it's here today and gone tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, it was, uh, it was, oh, I, I have a, as I have said, there have been an awful lot of thorns on the rose bushes that have been around me, mm -hmm. but the, the, the roses have been sweet. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it, I've had a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. I had uh, two wives, and both of them were beautiful, and mm -hmm. they were both 
good people, yeah. good people. It wasn't anything. Your grandmother was a was a great person. Yeah. yeah. How did you meet her? I was in the military. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't talked about that yet either. When when did you join the military? Oh. Oh, I was discouraged with the girl I was going with in Schenectady, and she drove me into the army. <laughs> <laughs> how, about how old were you at the time? Twenty, oh, I don't know. Early twenties? Yeah, 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 my early twenties. Let's see. I was, it was uh, 1928. Okay. When I went to the military. Okay. And uh, while down there at Miller Field, Staten Island, mm -hmm. I was with the tanks, mm -hmm. infantry tanks. Mm -hmm. While stationed down there, we had a Thanksgiving dance. And I was one of the committeemen on the okay. dance board. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, Italian lad that I went around with is called Guinea Sarah. <laughs> he was a bugler. Mm -hmm. Good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a girl in New York City, and through him he brought uh, Anne mm -hmm. over too, you know, mm -hmm. and come over, and that's how I met her at the Thanksgiving dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about that. Now you know the, the, there are a couple holes that we I should probably try to ask you about that to fill in here. How any other children born after uh, you you know the family got here? You have, you had your two brothers that came with me. They came with you. What happened after you? Uh, you well, know, we had two sisters that's, and another brother. That's what I thought. Okay, we haven't really spoken about them too much either. Well, uh, they didn't amount to much. <laughs> tell, tell me the the order and um, and, well, and, and names. Margaret was the first one that was born. Right. And then Catherine. Right. And then Gordon. Okay. Gordon. Gotcha. Right. So, and Gordon and, uh, is, uh, was the flyer. Right, he exactly. flew. He flew for uh, Chenault. Yeah. In China. Right. And um, he got killed. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, the airplane. So, how, how many years between you and, and Gordon? Seventeen. Seventeen. Wow. Seventeen years. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh, he was. Uh, I never forget. He, uh, of course. See, my father died. Yeah, when, when did he die? I don't remember the year. Yeah, about how old was he? My father. He was uh, 56, yeah. or around that, 50, 55, 57, you mm -hmm. know, 55, 56, 57, in there. In there somewhere, okay. Yeah. And uh, my mother lived 10 years longer. Okay. The silicosis got my father. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I was with uh, I was with Dad the night he died. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the in the parlor and sitting in the, the, the chair, easy chair, you know. I dozed off. He was breathing when I dozed off, but I was reading and, and just dozed off. That's all. And, and uh, I come to. I. Didn't hear him, so I went and looked, and he was gone. Hmm. So I went and woke my mother up. My mother had just come out of the hospital after breaking her arm in the Wallace Company. Oh, geez. she had fallen and had a compound fracture of her upper arm, hmm. and uh, she had just well, she'd been home maybe a week from the hospital when he died. She had a severe fracture. Mm -hmm. So I woke her up, and then we called the undertaker. Mm -hmm. Now where is he? Uh, where is he buried? Evergreen Cemetery. Is he? Yeah. Okay. And your mother's next to him. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, brother-in-law, Bill Powers, You're right, Mary, and uh, Mary Walt Nemeth. Right. They're all in the right. same plot. Right. Okay. And that's where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be with the same grave as my brother Walter. Okay. Hmm. okay. After you get to 100. 
when I get to be 100 or, yeah. or, 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 or after uh, that. Any, any, look, anything after 100, bonus. <laughs> That's all bonus, you know. So I... Uh, yeah. No. So, um, what did, uh, what did, uh, well, we know what, a little bit about what Walter, uh, your, your brother Walter, uh, did. He got into, uh, eventually, into cars and, and such, didn't he? No, what, my brother uh, Walter. No, he, your brother no. Walter. No, okay. What, what did he wind up doing? He uh, was with the J.B. Lyons Printing Company out of Albany. Oh, I'll be done. He was a pressman. Okay, all right. And he was a boss in the press room down there. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And now, uh, and Tom, who didn't stay in the area, um, what, what, what took him uh, Well, Tom away? married a girl in North Adams, Mass. Okay. And there was difficulties there, so Tom just uh, walked away from North Adams, and nobody knew where he had gone or anything like that. A lot of years. And that was funny, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she probably thought so, but... <laughs> well, you know, we went down there. Uh-huh. My brother Thomas had a, a, a death wish. Uh, Tom wanted to die. Carol and Mark and I went down to North Adams. And she said, he left his car. So I said, well, can I have the keys? And the first thing I did was open the trunk to see if he had done away with himself. Mm. That's the first thing I thought of. Wow. But he hadn't. Mm -hmm. And then, in a roundabout way, we heard that he had headed for California. And these, I don't know how these stories uh, seem to come back. I don't know how, what the, brought them back. Yeah, somehow. But then I heard that he was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I forget who told me. But the party that told me impressed upon me the fact that that's where he was. Hmm. So one Saturday, Carol and I were over the Schenectady Public Library. And they had a whole row of, of telephone directories hmm. there. So I walked over, I, Carol was doing all the business, and I just walked over, and I came on the Tulsa, Oklahoma telephone directory. And I looked up to see if there were any Riddells in it. And there were three Riddells in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And one of them had a woman's name, <laughs> and the two of them had men's names, and it wasn't Thomas. Right. right. So when we got back here, I called Tulsa, Oklahoma on the woman's number, uh -huh. and a woman answered. And when she answered, I said, is Thomas there? Yes, she said, just a moment. <laughs> So Thomas came on the phone, and I said to him, and where the hell do you think you are? Where the hell do you think you've been? I said, do you think you were going to kid somebody for the rest of your life? Well, that uh, took him, you know, by surprise. How, how, many, how much time had gone by? How many years was this? Oh, four or five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three, four, you know, yeah. something like that. But uh, it was a considerable sure. time, you know. Yeah, he was probably surprised. Well, uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he couldn't talk at first, you know, because he never expected. Sure. Uh, huh. So. Huh. No, it runs in the family. <laughs> it runs in the family. Running, running runs in the family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this affinity for the female sex. Oh yes, yes. So you met uh, you met Nana down in uh, uh, when well, you were in the army down down near the city, was it down in New York? She lived in New York. Lived in New York, okay. Oh, yeah, she lived on yeah. uh, 49th Street, hmm. on West 49th Street. Okay. See, which wasn't, it was a nice part of town. She lived yeah. and had uh, her, her mother mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and brother, sister. Right. They lived in a nice apartment house there. Right. 
it wasn't the best part of town, you know, but it was a good part. It, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. 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 How long before you got married? Oh, oh quite a while. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't one of those, you know. Quick things, yeah. No. Yeah. Your, your grandmother was, uh, your grandmother was taken ill, you know. You see, uh, I, I never, I never really knew. <clears throat> I, I knew what she told me, but she didn't tell me the whole story. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that she had a condition mm -hmm. that like that. Now she wasn't uh, uh, insane or anything like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, when she was in Utica, uh, when I went up to visit her, I uh, had a conference with the doctors, and they just, they told me then. They said uh, we have found out that she they, there's nothing mm -hmm. insane about the woman. There's right. just this condition. Yeah. They call it the manic de depression now. Sure. It wasn't uh, known anything about at that time. Right. Right. And uh, they said that when we go in conference, all of a sudden we we're starting to answer her questions. Hmm. She's questioning us, and that's you know. Yeah. So obviously so, it was. You know, it, yeah, it, it she wasn't, wasn't. She wasn't nuts. You yeah. Know? Right. She right. get these spells. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I didn't know anything about. Sure. Sure. So. Uh, now, how long were you in the army? Three years. Yeah. And you got married while you were still in the army. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And where did you where did you live when you when you, now did you travel with the army did you. Well, I didn't. Uh, I did traveling to camp and things like that, you know. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we uh, we lived with uh, down in Staten Island there. Okay. That's, that's where we were stationed in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. We lived with the family there, mm -hmm. and then of course, then I came home here, and I lived with my brother Walter, mm -hmm. and his family, uh, Anne and I, lived over there in Scotia. Right. Okay. But. Uh, I couldn't put up with her anymore. Uh, of course, she was pregnant, and the doctor said to me when uh, finally he called me. He said, "Bill, he said uh, she going to break you." He said, "I can't run over every day." He said, "And the, then she calls, and then he said there's nothing wrong with her, mm. just a pregnancy." Yeah. So I told her, I said, "You got to stop." calling the doctor. He's giving you a schedule when you call, you'll see him. But you got to stop. Well, we had an argument about that. And she says, I'm going back to New York. I said, you're damn right you're going back to New York. Hmm. So that's when we called her brother-in-law to come and get her. Okay. And her brother-in-law weighed for near 400 pounds. <laughs> He was a big guy. Six Who's this? Foot. Walter Jones. Okay. He was six foot four. Mm-hmm. Weighed three hundred and sixty or eighty pounds or something Oof. like that. He was a big, big man. Now, who was he married to? He was married to uh, her stepsister. Okay. And stepsister. All right. Martha. Okay. That's who we call Martha after her. Okay. And. Uh, She was a nice woman. Walt was a, he was surly, mm -hmm. sort of a cuss. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, was uh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad in a way, because it was because of him that Martha is, lives here now. Yeah. Because as I said, uh, we brought her up here and I couldn't stand her. And that was funny, you know, <laughs> finally, well, we, we talked about that before we started running the uh, running the tape. We talked about that at, at breakfast. Um, when it, you you didn't know originally that that Martha had been born, you you were separated from from Nana, so you hadn't heard that she'd actually no, been born. No, I no, I didn't know whether I had a boy or a girl, right. whether it was a male or female. Right. That was a, it. Wasn't for it was about a year before you knew that. A year, a year and a half. Yeah. 
So I, uh, as I said, I decided that uh, I've got a child somewhere in this world and mm -hmm. I should be taking care of it. Mm -hmm. So after investigating and uh, scooping around and finding out that they didn't have the statistics in Albany, why they had them in New York, and I found out that I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. So my father and I went down and we saw the baby, you saw the child, and mm -hmm. she was a cute little thing at the time, but uh, she didn't want to have anything to do with me. Sure. I don't blame her. <laughs> but uh, finally, it was agreed that she would come back and live with me, and the mother. Mm -hmm. We were still married. We hadn't sure. divorced. Yeah. So we came back. God, uh, d wasn't Catherine? It was right away, you know, mm -hmm. pregnant for Catherine. So, what were you doing to earn a living at the time? I worked for city. Schenectady. Yeah, I was uh, construction foreman. Mm -hmm. We were putting in a lot of sewers catch basins all over Schenectady hmm. and I was a foreman while well, they built these catch basins uh -huh. all over all over Schenectady. Sure. Early but in sewer lines. Right. Early early storm. 1930s probably then, right? Late, yeah, late yeah, early 30s. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Martha is only a couple of years older than, than Mom. Was she a year and a half, two years older I think? Yeah, two years. Two old. years? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mom was born in 33. Yeah. Yeah. That's when? Right. Late, late 33. Yeah. November, I believe. Uh, December 1st. Oh, December 1st. That's December right. 1st. December 1st. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah I, I don't, I try not to forget that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad, I, I'm glad. <laughs> no, you, your mother's got a good family. Uh, well, thank you. I your so mother. Too. Considering everything, <laughs> so you were working for the city and uh, trying to make the, uh, the the marriage work. Yeah, yeah. I tried to. I'll tell you what. Uh, we didn't have an awful lot of furniture or anything like that. But uh, your grandmother couldn't keep a house. Of course, she had three kids, mm -hmm. and that was a chore for her. And as I said, I, I uh, she just couldn't, didn't know how to keep a house. Mm -hmm. And my uh, meeting Carol was because of the fact that Carol wanted to learn how to play bagpipes. Really? <laughs> and Carol came over to the monument shop one Saturday morning wanting to talk my father into taking her as a pupil. And my father wasn't going to teach anymore. He was, well, it was the year before he died. Yeah, he was, he was in pretty bad shape. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's the one that said, well, Bill can teach you. Hmm. And uh, I started teaching and I came to start coming to this house. Hmm. Over 50 years ago, you were saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, now this well, we, this uh, house was in Carol's family, or was it her Carol's, house? Carol's, uh, no, it was, was her mother's house to begin with. Okay. But Carol always took care of the, all the expenses and everything in the right, house. Right. What you was see, her What was her maiden name? Estabrook. Okay. Uh, you see, there was uh, six girls. Oh wow. Six girls. <clears throat> One of them got killed uh, going over the bank at the Edison Club. There went over into the. Erie Canal. Oh my God! Yeah, she had bought a car. Just bought a car, and she was learning how to drive it. Oh! And she uh, went plowing through the bushes there and down over the cliff there. Oh my God! She didn't come home that night, and they wondered why she hadn't come home and everything like that. Wow! And the car, just the back of it, was sticking out of the uh, canal. Wow! How old was she? Well, I don't know what her age was. No. no. Wow. She was uh, next to Carol. Yeah. 
in age. Carol was the oldest of the, two, of okay. the family, you know. Yeah. But, uh, hmm. yeah, they... Hmm. Um, how long did, now you continued working for the, uh, for the city for a while? What, what did yeah. you do, what did you do after, uh, after the construction? I don't remember who <laughs> I've done so damn many things. I oh I worked for the Cold Bacon Company. I was Did you? Yeah, I was a root foreman for them. Mm -hmm. I, I started I started working for the Cold Bakery. They had a place up the corner of uh, Albany and Swan Street in Schenectady. Yeah. Their bakery there. Well it was a warehouse, it was a storage, you know. Mm hmm. We did some baking there, bear's claws and pastries. Yeah. Uh, I started uh, with them in the, their garage. When the trucks would come in off the route, why I kept them clean, and I would check the oil and the gas and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then one day the boss came along and said, uh, "How about you taking a route?" Well, I said, okay. So I took a route, and then I was made uh, route foreman. Mm -hmm. I was made foreman. I worked for the Colonial Ice Cream Company in Scotia Yeah. when I w was going to school. Wow. That's that one of your earlier jobs? Then? Yeah, that's one, one I, well, that was one of my first, first jobs. First jobs, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was back. I don't know, 19, 18, 18 19, 19, 20, yeah. and there, you know. Sounds about right, yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still in school, man. And, uh, so you've got three, uh, three mouths to feed at uh, home, uh, three children anyway. Uncle Ike was born when? A couple of years after Mom, or is there longer uh, between those, those two? About, uh, no, they're about the same. About, about two years. He's 56 now. He's okay. 56. So yeah. Three, three, four years maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they tell stories of uh, being uh, sent out to retrieve you from the uh, local uh, uh, establishment that you like to frequent, and uh, not coming back. <laughs> they you well, wind up buying. Uh, I used to stop there. I used to stop there. Or maybe I'd leave the house, uh -huh. go around to the Mayfair uh -huh. on Becker Street in Schenectady. Uh -huh. And, of course, I had a lot of friends. And if they weren't friends, why, well, they were enemies or, you know, I didn't give a damn. <laughs> and then, pretty soon, Martha would come in. Mother wants you to come home. Okay, we'll go right away. Get up here. I get her a soda, uh -huh. and then she'd sit there having her soda, and I'd have another beer. And pretty soon, Catherine would come in. <laughs> Your mother. Yeah. Oh, so, well, we'll go pretty soon. Get up here. And so I get her up there and another soda, <laughs> and then then we go home. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, In thinking about it, it wasn't very conducive to a good relationship. Mm. It's uh, funny, some of the things that you do unconsciously when you're younger like that. Mm -hmm. At that time, I didn't think that it was wrong. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I thought it was right either. Yeah, but you never. But uh, it, it was just a passing thing. That's all. It did. Uh, yeah. it, it was life. Yeah. It was life. Yeah. But uh, and it's funny how I worry more about your your mother, your sister, your aunts, mm -hmm. your uncle. I worry more about my kids now than I ever did when I was young. <laughs> sure. Now, I, 
now if things don't go just right, uh, if their life isn't going the way it should go, it bothers me a lot. Where when I was young, it didn't bother me one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. You know? Hmm. No, it's... Uh, Tell me uh, how the uh, how the bagpipe uh, band continued to progress. You mentioned when you were young, you were already traveling with them. Um, what uh, you you went on competitions and marched in, in parades and such. You did a lot of traveling. How long did that that last? Did you do that a lot? Oh yeah, we did that a lot. That <coughs> you see, you see the average age the average age of a bagpipe band or any band yeah is about five years yeah without them dissolving or sure. things. <clears throat> of course, the Schenectady Pipe Band has been recruiting new members. Uh, oh boy, you know, over and over and over. There's yeah. uh, only a couple that uh, played in my time that's still there, you know? Yeah, sure. In fact, there's only one piper and then the drum major, mm -hmm. Ian. Mm -hmm. So. We did a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. When I stopped to think about it, we've gone to Cobles Hill with a full band. We've gone to Cobles Hill for fifty dollars, <laughs> seventy-five dollars would have been a lot of money that day. Sure, you know. Sure, and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and played these different places. Right. Your grandfather and I, <clears throat> we played for the Ford Company yeah. for a while. Well, for many weekends we traveled down to the coast by train mm -hmm. and we'd play in front of a Ford uh, agency. Wow. Yeah, Macon, Georgia, mm -hmm. and different places. Okay. That was when they had the Scotty Dogs. Hmm. They had two Scotty Dogs uh, on their ads all over. Oh, yeah. They had that for years, you know. Yeah. And we put the kilts on and we played it, uh, you know. Yeah, we we did that for a while. We had a good, nice contract with, with the Ford people there for a while. Mm -hmm. No, I've uh, I've been traveling with the bagpipe band ever since I was eight years old. Yeah, yeah. When did you? Uh when did you actively give it, you know, actually actively give it up? It wasn't until... You never did, given it up. You never given it up completely, but you stopped playing six, 1960s sometime, probably? <coughs> I, I don't ever remember actually seeing you play, and so I tend to think it was probably the, you know, the, the 50s or early 60s that you probably... In the 70s I was playing. Were you still playing in the 70s? Sure. Yeah, you, were, were you... Still traveling with the, the band then, or were you? Just oh, uh, I had I uh, I I taught the Air Force band. Uh huh. I taught them. I uh, helped teach the Burlington Pipe Band. Yeah. In Burlington. <laughs> that was the St. Andrews Pipes and Drums. Okay. In Burlington, Vermont. Mm -hmm. I helped teach that band. And that's where I stopped playing, was okay. up there. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. when I was, yeah, that's when I, that's when I, of course these fingers is what did that, you know. Sure. These fingers is what, uh, <clears throat> I yeah. got just as much wind as I ever had, but uh, <laughs> the fingers quit on me, they, they folded up on me. Yeah, right, right. See? And uh, this this finger here, I don't mind that. That part was all right. It was this finger? No, this finger here is the one that. Okay. The one that uh, this finger here, you know. You, you can do without. Yeah. yeah. But the bottom one. But the bottom there. line, and you this one, this was one of the most important fingers of the whole. Yeah. Bagpipe. Now, do you feel that was that was due to the years of playing that, or is that a condi completely different condition that caused that? No, that caused that. That was caused mostly from my uh, judo. Your what? When I was uh, judo, uh, learning the judo business. Seriously? Yes, when was, yeah. When was this? In the, in the military. In the military, yeah. 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 And you, you know, we some, used to... Yeah. You did some damage or... Well, yeah, nerves. Oh, I'll be darned. The nerves. Didn't know that? Yeah. 
Oh, there are those are things that I uh, forgot about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You had you had a good line earlier when you said uh, that uh, you'd uh, forgotten more than I'd ever really want to know. <laughs> well. Yes, there I have. <laughs> there, there isn't. Uh, I I have never uh, what you could uh, say that I did anything that was really bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've had some involvement with women that I don't boast about. Mm -hmm. You know, but as far as it being bad, it wasn't bad. It was good. <laughs> You don't stand on the barn roof and, <laughs> and tell a stolen. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, it's one of those things, you know. It just, yeah, sure. Just yeah. Hmm. Right. Um, so you uh, eventually uh, uh, divorced Nana. Yeah. And uh, and remarried to Carol. Yeah. Was that was that a pretty quick succession? Well, yes. Yeah, because you'd known uh, Carol for a while. Forty-three. Uh, we got married in forty-three. Okay. And Mark was born in forty-seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so by that time you're living uh, living here. Yeah. 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 And, well, you see, we uh, took over the mortgage. Okay. In fact, we paid the mortgage off that was on this house. So this house belonged to her mother. Yeah. And there were six girls in this house, as I said. So Carol had always been the keeper of the house. Uh -huh. She always uh, supplied the finances. Of course, when the girls were living home, why they paid board or whatever it is, you know, to sure. keep the finances going. But then they all moved away. Mm -hmm. uh, Harriet. And Julia, and Sally, Harriet was uh, nursed down at John Hopkins, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, Julia, she was uh, down in New York Hospital, and Sally was down at Mount Sinai Hospital. Wow. They became nurses. They all became nurses. They all yeah. left. Uh -huh. Then Mary, of course, uh, she was uh, with the GE company, and then Mary went with the government. Mm -hmm. She was in the wax. Huh. And uh, became a sergeant in the wax, and then she, uh, boy, she was a miserable, poor, miserable. <laughs> and uh, what was Carol doing when you uh, when you met her? Carol was uh, with the publicity department of the Jim Lecker Company. Oh, okay. She was in the photo lab, uh -huh. and she used to uh, in the art department. Mm -hmm. See, she. That's uh, those oh, two yeah, pictures. This couple. one here. Yeah. That's all. That, yeah, there, there's some nice know, old uh, pictures. I, I remember these, and, and uh, especially when she, uh, I remember when she first did the the soar the uh, sailplane here, the soaring yeah, it's, plane. Yeah. And then uh, I didn't realize that she did this one. Yeah, that's I. Uh, I uh, <laughs> That's okay, you can keep talking. There she is right there. Yeah, she's right there. Mm-hmm. There's Mark. Yeah. It's a great picture of Aunt Kay. That that is Aunt Kay, isn't it? That's the right. the black and white? Yes. Yeah. It's Aunt Okay, that's the the two of them right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I ride alongside is Gail and her two sons and uh, me. Mm-hmm. We uh, her one son graduated from high school. Uh huh. From Shenandoah. Right. How long have you known Gail? That goes. Years. Yeah, that goes back a ways. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about uh, Uncle Gordy. I I don't know. Uh, a lot about him, but uh, what uh, he was in the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he uh, he uh, was. Uh, I'll never forget. 
mm -hmm. when he joined to the service. <clears throat> when Gordy graduated from high school, it was during the Depression. Of course, I have always assumed, and I assumed the head of the family at that time. Okay. My father was dead. Right. I became the head of the family. So when Gordy graduated from high school, there was no work. And I said to Gordon, I said, Gordy, go back, take a postgraduate course. I said, you're not going to get out of school now. I said, there's no work. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hang around the street. So take a postgraduate course, which he did. Mm -hmm. So there's something happened. He went to work for the General Electric Company after he graduated. He went to work for the General Electric Company okay. as a messenger boy mm -hmm. in their mailing department. So he had quite a he had quite a job. He used to take mail all around the offices, you know, different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came home one day and he was angry about something and he was going to join the army and he was going to do this and that and uh, I wasn't living at home then I was you know my own home family right my mother called me and she's crying get over here right away she says get over here right away she says I got to well I thought he says I've done something wrong I've done something <laughs> wrong I'm going to get it this time, you know. So I went over. And she said to me, they were living in Scotia at the time. She said to me, your brother's going to join the army, mad at the General Electric Company, and he's going to join the army, and blah, 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 blah. So I said to her then, now that's back in, before the war broke out. Mm-hmm. What, 1940? Yeah. I said to Ma, I said, Ma, of course I was relieved that it wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you were going to get trouble, you know. All right. <laughs> I said, well, Ma, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea if he did join the Army. I said, there's a possibility, I says, that uh, this country is going to go to war. Yeah. I said, it doesn't look good at all. Mm -hmm. I said, let me see what I can do. So he and I went to Albany. Gordy and I went over to Albany to the recruiting officer. And I went in and I said, uh, boy wants to join the Air Force. So this colonel was sitting there and says, Gee, I'm sorry, he says, there's nothing open in the Air Force at the present time, he said. I said, no, but I said, there's something going to be open. I said, sometime in the near future. Well, he says, we expect it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, uh, but he says, he can join the infantry or he can join the artillery, he can join anything and, and get a transfer. I says, don't tell me about transfers. <laughs> I said, I've been in it already. Yeah. I said, don't tell me about transfers. I said, those things... Yeah. They don't come. I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, take our name and address. I says, and as soon as there's something to open in the Air Force, give us a call or drop us a card or something, and mm -hmm. we'll come right over and he'll enlist. So we started out the door, and the colonel says, just a moment. He says, I got 18, he says, unopened assignments for the Air Force. He says, I'll give you one. Wow. So he started reading them off, and he came to Chanute Air Force Base in Illinois. Mm -hmm. I said, that's the one, Mark, or... Uh, Gordy. Gordy. Chanute. I said, I know all about Chanute. So that's when he signed up. Mm -hmm. And it seemed that down the General Electric Company, Joe Clark was, oh, Gordy had joined the track and field team. The General Electric Company used to be quite heavy in athletics down yeah. there, you know. He yeah. had joined the athletic team. 
and Gordy was a, a burglar. Mm -hmm. And Joe Clark, who was a coach of the team, wanted Gordy to go either go into the low hurdles or go into the high hurdles, one or the other, and Gordy wouldn't go. And Joe Clark said to him, well, you'll be sorry for this one of these days. And that's what got Gordy mad and ah. Gordy went into service. Okay. He wasn't going to take any of that crap. <laughs> that's one of the things that you will find, that we do have, and in many ways, a stupid uh, idea of who we are. Mm -hmm. That we uh, think we're, you know, that no, nobody's going to tell us. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's going to tell us. We're going. <laughs> and that is stupid. Because sometimes it'd be better. Well, I mean, it would save a lot of grief. <laughs> That's true. That's you true. Know, it would save a lot of grief. With, you know it now, but you uh, uh, no. didn't think about it back then. And I don't think I'd think about it now. <laughs> even. No, I don't think. You know, it wouldn't make my uh, that much of a difference. Yeah. There's things I do now that I don't want to do, but I do it to keep peace in the family. <laughs> you know. But, uh, but uh, and of course, Gordy, he uh, went in the Air Force. Yeah. And they finally told him he went out to Chanute Air Force Base and he learned navigation out there. Mm -hmm. Well, then when they got called up to be an officer, he wrote me a letter and told me, he said, boy, this is tough. Mm. He said, most of the guys that he says that I'm with yeah. had at least two years college education. He said some of them had full years, four yeah, years. Four of them, yeah. And he said, I only had a high school education. He said, I have to study every night. Well, he made it. He, uh, he made it. Uh, and uh, he went with Chenault in China, China, India, and Burma. Wow. And he was telling about one time he was in uh, Bombay, and he was with a buddy, and he heard bagpipes. Hmm. So he said to his buddy, come on, let's follow that sound. And they followed the sound, and they got to this, and this door was wide open, and, and there was a, a, a Singalis, one of those Singalese, yeah, yeah. because he was a, had been a, a soldier in the British Army. Ah, know, okay, the sure. British yeah, ruled the world. Ruled India, sure, yeah, yeah. And he was playing pipes, so Gordy made himself known to this Singalis. And then, when it got time. The Singala says, now let me take you out of this district. He says, this is off limits, he says to you guys. He said, well, let, you, let me take you out of here, he says. He says, you have to get killed before you're out of here. Mm -hmm. And so this, they, they had moved, wandered, you know, out a little, of... A little too far, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. had gone too far and then yeah. gone in a restricted area. Mm -hmm. And so Gordy had uh, bagpipes in, in India and, you know... Amazing, in yeah. In India. Something else, yeah. So, yeah, they... So how long was he uh, was he in the Air Force? When uh... well, he uh, he he was in till it was over. Yeah, till the war was over. Oh yeah, yeah. he was in till it was over. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back, why then he went to uh, Air National Guard. Okay. And that's when he was making that routine flight to Niagara in October of that year, I forget the year that it was. But. Yeah, was it, was it, could it have been around the time I was born, or shortly there after? I was born in 52, or was it before then? It was uh, you, no, you, was I alive? You, you were alive, you were just a baby. Okay. You were just a baby, because yeah. we were, we went down to your Aunt Nora's. Yeah. With uh, you uh, just in the, your, your mother's arms. Okay. And uh, that was where we found out that Gordy was killed. I'll be darned. You know. And it was on a routine flight? Well, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And But ran into a snowstorm. And the snowstorm covered a radius of about 50 miles. Mm hmm. And uh, we, uh, that was funny, you know. We had gone out, we had left you with your Aunt Nora. Okay. And Gordy and your 
mother and your aunt and I had gone out to eat. Mm -hmm. I guess I think your aunt was with us, but anyway, we had gone to eat. Yeah. At uh, Port Henry. And of course, I didn't stand in too good. Oh, of course, I thought I was in good with Nora and, and Mike. I had no trouble with them, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we got back to the house, Aunt Nora said, uh, Ann, will you come in the kitchen? She said, I got something to tell you. So I sat there in the chair and I thought to myself, now what the hell's going on? Yeah. I said, you know, yeah. this, uh, hey, now maybe I'm like in the doghouse again. again yeah. you know, maybe, you know. <laughs> So I just sat there, and then your grandmother came in and came over to me, and I could see there was something funny. And she dropped down on her knees right in front of me, and she says, Bill, don't take this bad, she says. But Gordy got killed. Mm. Well, dude, you know, boy, that was who can you do? Jesus. You know, he's your baby brother. So I said, she you know, told me, you know, that mm -hmm. I says, all right, get ready to get the baby ready and everything. I said, I said to your mother, I said, get uh, get the baby ready and everything. I said, we're going home right now. So then your grandmother says, can I go home with you? Mm -hmm. She can I go with you? Get ready. Within a half hour, I says, because we're moving. We all come home. Mm -hmm. 